All right. So Parker is the founder of Parker Walbuck uh, Productions and full time and full time filmmaker. Uh, while studying marketing at Southern Univer Utah University, Parker turned his passion for filmmaking and videography into a business. He purchased a new camera and gear and began film filming events that immediately gained campus-wide attention and created demand for more video work and side gigs. Several months later, he had a unique opportunity to work on a project with the widely known YouTube channel Devin Supertramp. That experience quickly led to a full-time position as a videographer and editor for the channel. Parker spent the next three years traveling the world creating video content with the Devon Super Tramp team. Since then, he has launched his own YouTube channel and online film school full-time filmmaker. Currently, he creates YouTube video content promoting his film school and is working on a new course teaching people how to monetize their knowledge through online course creation. I've had the opportunity this evening to get to know Parker a little bit better. Very personable person uh, and also an extremely hard worker. So I would encourage all of you to get your notepads out, take time to listen to what he has to say and learn from his experience as an entrepreneur. As part of his introduction, we have a short film that shows a little bit of his work. So we'll go ahead and roll that now and then afterward, we'll give Parker a big welcome to the stage, all right? We wake up by the sunrise And you're staring back at me I hold on to the moment As we cast it out to sea And the lights come on, the lights come on Reflecting off your skin So burning stars are all we are Ignited from within it's your heart and soul, it's your flesh and bones Don't you let it go You're the storm I find, bursting through my sky Seeking no control, it's your heart and soul It's your heart and soul
What's up, guys? Thanks for having me. Yeah, so that footage you saw was uh, footage I shot with my camera, either a 5D, a 1DX Mark II, a 1DC, a RED, uh, maybe some GoPros in there. I shot all that with Devin Supertramp over about a three-year period. That was a while ago. I haven't watched that in a while. I forgot all the things I've done. That was a crazy time of life. Um, but yeah, so I'm a, I'm a filmmaker. I do video production. Um, I'm also a YouTuber. Uh, we're up to about half a million subscribers now on YouTube. I mostly put out a lot of tutorial type content, teaching other people how to do video for a living. And I'm a course creator. That's actually what's kind of become my new full-time job is um, creating marketing and selling online courses as I've gotten a lot more passionate about the education realm and, and helping other people do what, what I've been able to do uh, for a living. And in that process, I've learned how to become a, a really good marketer and do a lot of online marketing. And I really don't even consider myself a filmmaker. When people ask me what I am, I usually just tell them I'm an entrepreneur. I just happen to be dabbling in video currently. It's the business venture that I'm doing right now that I'm passionate about and I like. But more than anything, I like building businesses. I like growing uh, and developing new skills. And so, you know, you guys are an entrepreneur class. You're here to learn some, some skills, some habits, some principles that you can apply. And hopefully what I can teach today can apply not only to video, for those of you who are interested in video production, but any type of uh, business you want wanting to go into as an entrepreneur. Hopefully the, the, uh, the tips I'll be given today, the principles I'll be teaching will be helpful no matter what you're going to be doing. So, um, as I mentioned, I work with Devin Supertramp. Anyone know who Devin Supertramp is? He's got about 5 million subscribers right now. Awesome dude. I had the chance to work with him. We'll talk about how I got that opportunity. Um, but that's where uh, I kind of got started with this. And here's kind of a list of some of the cool places that I've been able to travel to. And that's one of the cool perks of doing video production is it does give you a lot of opportunities to travel and to see new cultures and do new things. And here's some of the, the brands I've been able to work with. Those are brands I worked with with Devin Supertramp and, you know, working with guys like Dude Perfect and Brody Smith and just some awesome uh, people in that realm as well. And since branching off with Devin, I've been able to work with companies like LG and Hyundai. And so as I've grown, I've, I've been able to work with companies that have given me amazing experiences, learning experiences, learn how to market and to uh, help, help uh, businesses grow. And like I mentioned, my, my full-time job right now, a lot of my time goes into course creation. So I, I put together a course called Full-Time Filmmaker. I'll talk about how that came into existence and how that kind of exploded my, uh, my sources of revenue and, and allowed me to make uh, a lot more money in a lot of different kinds of ways. Um, but that was a course I put together that, that uh, is up to, I think, 160, 170 tutorials. That's over 35 hours of content that kind of teaches my whole process of how I got into and succeeded in the video business. We have about 7,000 students uh, in that course right now, so I, I do a lot of mentoring, and that's where I've kind of found is my new passion is uh, helping other people's businesses grow, and so hopefully we can give you guys some good tips today. Now, one of the biggest questions I get asked is, how did you get started? People want to know, okay, you're, most of you are probably in your low 20s. That's where I was. Oh, how old am I? I'm 29, for those of you wondering. So it was about seven years ago now, six or seven years ago, where I bought my first camera. I picked up a camera and started out this, this whole process. And so how did I get from just buying my first camera to doing this successfully, traveling the world and all that? When I was your guys' age, I had no schooling. I had no experience. I didn't own a camera. Didn't know how they worked. What I was doing was knocking doors selling direct TV in Texas. <laughs> and if you guys are doing that, I'm not knocking on you. That's a great way to save up some money during the summer. Um, but I absolutely hated it. It was the worst job I've ever had. It wasn't for me. I'm an introvert. I don't like talking to people in general, let alone strangers on their door, annoying them about buying something I didn't even believe in and don't even use in direct TV. <laughs> and so, 
that was an amazing experience for me, though, because it taught me that I don't want to do for a living something that I hate just to make money. That's the first time I realized I need to find something that I actually love and that I'm passionate about, or else I'm never going to be happy in life, no matter how much money I'm making. And I came across this quote uh, from Steve Jobs that hit me hard, that kind of turned things around for me. He said, for the past 33 years, I've looked in the mirror every morning and asked myself, if today were the last day of my life, what I want to do, what I'm about to do today? And whenever the answer has been no for too many days in a row, I know I need to change something. I have been knocking doors for too many days in a row, dreading waking up, dreading going out to work, and I knew I needed to change something, so I did. The next day, I drove back to Utah 17 straight hours and uh, started looking for something I actually liked. I was on YouTube one day that summer trying to figure out, okay, what am I going to do with my life? I was, I think, 22 at the time, had a couple of years of college under my belt. I was at uh, SUU at the time and uh, didn't even know what I was going to study. I was just finishing up my generals and it's like, okay, what am I going to major in? What am I going to study for real? And I came across this video by Devin Supertramp. It's his Kauai video. It had all these beautiful images of Hawaii mixed with this music. And it just completely inspired me and made me say, that's what I want to do. That's it. And he has all these behind the scenes videos that were showing how he was doing it. He showed the camera gear, how he was walking. And, and so I took a leap of faith. I said, I want, to, I want to give this a shot. Here's a guy who's doing it for a living. He's proven that you can. And that was one thing when I was growing up in high school and, and college, most people told me, you can't do video for a living. There's no money in that. Or it's not a lifestyle that can support a family. Or, you know, I heard all the negativity. I said, okay, so I'm not going to go into it. I'm not going to study it in college. So, you know, I originally found my passion for video in high school, but went on my mission to Uruguay, came back, and it kind of, the passion kind of died, and everyone told me you shouldn't even try and pick it up again, so I didn't. I listened to the, the critics, right? So it wasn't until a few years after my mission that I said, you know what, let's give this a shot. Let's just see how it would go, see if I'd like it. So this is my first setup that I bought. A used Canon T3i, a Tokina 11-16 to lens, and a Glidecam HD 2000. So my first setup was about $1,300. And uh, so I ordered that, and all the money that I just made knocking doors, spent it all. I quit like a month into knocking doors, came back in the summer, bought a camera equipment with all that money. But as soon as it arrived at my door, I realized I had no idea how to use it. And anyone who's bought a camera, I'm sure, is in that same boat, right? It's like, okay, I got the camera, now what, what do I do next? Well, you go to YouTube, right? So I started watching YouTube videos, spent the rest of the summer watching YouTube, then going out and practicing with the camera, watching a new video, practicing, then bringing the footage in, editing it, and then going back, watching again, more YouTube videos. So I did that all summer long, spent like 10 hours a day, just from trial and error, teaching myself, and then looking up new tutorials to try and learn something new. Did that all summer, and uh, that's kind of what eventually, we'll talk about later, sparked the idea of full-time filmmaker, was I realized how hard it was to get started in video unless you were going to go to a prestigious film school and pay tens of thousands of dollars over four years. And so that's what kind of sparked that idea of let's create an education platform where people can learn this stuff that isn't just years of endless YouTube videos. Um, but anyway, I took my YouTube knowledge. I went down to SUU uh, that fall where I was attending school. And there is where I had my first opportunity to fake it till you make it. And guys, this is one of the biggest principles that I'll talk about today, and one of the biggest principles that has led me to my success is being confident in yourself. I bought that camera, and I felt like every other Instagram vlogger and mom that has just bought a camera, and I was like, I feel so out of place. I felt embarrassed to take my camera out and shoot photos, because they're like, oh, you're getting into photography? It's like, yeah. <laughs> but I didn't want to say it, you know? But be confident. Yeah, I bought a camera, and I'm going to be good at it in a second. <laughs> and this was the first time that I was actually confident about it. For the first few months, it was very timid, very, you know, I don't know what I'm doing yet. But I went to an event where they were having this awesome paint dance with this fun DJ. And I went to it with my buddies, and I saw that no one was filming it. And I said, here's an opportunity to 
fake it till I make it. So I ran back to my car, jumped over the fence, grabbed my car, came back to the venue, and I just jumped over that little fence right there, jumped up on the stage, and just started filming. <laughs> and pretty soon I was like, all right, no one's telling me to get off. So I'm you know, getting confident now. And then pretty soon I'm telling the DJ what to do. Hey, look at the camera. And then I'm going to the students, telling them what to do. Then I start directing everybody. Pretty soon everyone there thinks, oh, the camera guy finally showed up. Sweet. Now, I don't recommend breaking into venues and filming things, but I did have friends that were part of the student body that kind of helped me get in there. But the point is, I was confident in myself when I said, okay, I have no idea what I'm doing. I've never filmed a professional video, but let's just go capture some footage and see what happens. So I spent the whole night filming footage, and then I came home, pulled an all-nighter, edited together the footage, posted it on YouTube, and the next day, everyone in the school was watching it. Everyone was watching it, talking about how cool it was, including the administration who saw it. And they pulled me into their office and they said, hey, we like this. We want to give you a scholarship to shoot the rest of our events. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> I'll take a scholarship. Little did they know, I had no idea what I was doing. But I was confident in it. And I was like, yeah, I, I deserve that scholarship. I'll take it. So that one opportunity that presented itself, I acted in confidence, which begat more confidence, which led to more opportunities that were beyond me, that I faked it again and was confident until, and that's kind of the process that I've taken my entire life that has led me from one success to another. And one of the things that very few people are willing to do that keeps them from ever succeeding, ever growing, is them, you guys are never going to be confident if you don't just start acting. Just start doing it anyway and faking it till you make it. And that's what I would say is one of my best attributes that's allowed me to be successful. I don't even think I'm that good, but I'm good at thinking I'm good. <laughs> um, so what that led to was more opportunities, like I said. The uh, gymnastics team said, hey, we like your stuff. Can you come film some events? And pretty soon I was traveling the country with the gymnastics team filming all their stuff. I started doing local commercials for companies. And uh, so as far as getting started, put yourself out there, guys. Create content. And as you create content, people see that content. They want to hire you for their thing. And the more content you put out there, the more people are seeing it, the more people with their businesses and, and things they need videos for are going to want videos. So that's one of the biggest things I say. Just get out there and create. Fake it till you make it. So... That initial investment I made landed me the scholarship, got me a part-time job filming the SEU gymnastics team, got me a bunch of local gigs, and I eventually paid off that equipment and more and started realizing, hey, I can make some money with this. And uh, so what that led to was, and this is another big principle, is invest in yourself. I made that initial investment in myself, spent all my life savings, all my summer sales savings, bought some camera gear, and then as soon as I profited and made some money, I poured all of that money back into my business. And that's another thing that a lot of people aren't willing to do. I hear so many people complaining that they don't have money. It's like, well, go earn some money and then spend it on your business. It's like, go get a job, do whatever you have to to make some money to get you, to get you rolling. And so, and even in this case, I saved up three grand, but I wanted to upgrade my equipment to something that was seven grand. I didn't have that. So I actually went to my dad and I said, hey, dad, can I just get a lend? Just lend me a few thousand dollars. Promise I'll pay it back in a few months, but I need this to progress in my business. And so my dad later told me, he's like, I didn't think you'd make anything of it. I thought it was just a fun hobby you were doing. But I did at least believe in you as an individual that you would give it your best shot and work your butt off to potentially make it into something. So my dad lent me a few thousand bucks, bought some all new equipment which led to my next opportunity. And that was, at the time, Devin Graham, Devin Supertrent was my big idol. I looked up to him and watched all of his tutorials, all his videos. And he posted on Facebook one day and said, I just did a shoot in Hawaii. Our actor who we used is still in Hawaii. We came back to Utah, but we have to redo some shots. So we have to find somebody who has arms that look like him. And so he posted those arms and he said, um, send me your arms if you want to be the arm double. <laughs> and my buddy saw the post. He said, dude, send him your arms. <laughs> your arms look just like that. And I'm like, 
okay. So I sent him a picture of my arms. <laughs> and he texted, he, he messaged me back immediately, and I was like starstruck, like, here's my idol, and he's responding to me. And I'm like, wanted to say, oh, dude, you're such an inspiration, like, <laughs> thank you so much for responding. But he responded and said, perfect, can you be in Provo tomorrow? And I'm like, yes, I'll be there. <laughs> And he said, but do you know how to use a gun? I've never used a gun in my life. I said, absolutely. <laughs> and then I spent the rest of that night having my friend who did know how to use a gun teach me how to use, how to hold a gun so that I could do whatever he needed me to do the next day. <laughs> Again, fake it till you make it. So the next day I spent the whole day uh, fake tattooed up as his arm model. And while I was there, I was picking his brain saying, Devin, you know, I noticed you're the only one filming. Do you need help? Someone to shoot behind the scenes, help you edit? And he said, actually, you know, I'm, I'm looking for somebody right now. And I said, well, check out my work. And I didn't have much work at the time, but I showed him something that was good enough. And he said, yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Why don't you come to uh, one of my shoots next week? I'm like, sweet. So if any of you guys have seen that, those are my arms, my beautiful arms. <laughs> I always joke that it was my arms that got me in the door with Devin. Um, but that's kind of what started my career with Devin was, and this is another big principle I live by, is add value first and circle of influence, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But find people that have already succeeded in the, in the industry that you want to succeed in and then go add value to them. I gave him my arms for a full weekend. That's a lot of value. I gave him my time, and then I offered to go shoot some free work for him. I said, let me just come shoot for free. I shot like three or four months for free shooting behind the scenes. I started doing edits for him for free. Remember, I, I spent like 40 hours on one edit for him, just poured all my blood, sweat, and tears into it just so I could prove that I, I'm capable of working for him. And so I added a ton of value working for free for several months until he's finally like, okay, I want this guy working for me. And so he hired me on full time, and that's kind of what started my career with Devin Supertramp was, was my arms. But then adding value first, and then the value came back to me in a full time job working with, at the time, my idol, the guy I looked up to and always wanted to work with. And at the time, he had thousands of people wanting to work for him, emailing him. He actually did a post a month before I got the job saying he's looking for uh, someone to work for him, and he got hundreds, thousands of entries and somehow he picked me. Why? Because I added value and showed him what I could do without expecting anything in return, and eventually that value always comes back. Now people ask, if you had this amazing job working for Devin, I spent you know, two and a half, three years traveling the world with him, shooting with all these big name brands, having amazing experiences, doing what I loved. They say, why did you leave? And this is another principle I live by. It's called continue learning and growing. I got to a point with Devin where I was kind of stuck as an employee. It's like it was his business, his empire. It was a lot of fun, a lot of great opportunities, but I could only grow so much in someone else's business. And anybody who wants to be an entrepreneur and start their own businesses, you probably have some of that bug inside you as well, where you, you want to be your own boss. You want sky's the limit. You want to have unlimited potential. And that's kind of how I am. And, and I had an amazing time with Devin, but at a certain point I said, but I want to do this and I want to do that, and there wasn't room for that in his business. And so I left Devin Supertramp actually the month that I got married. Um, I quit my job, so I, my first month of marriage was I was unemployed. And I told my wife, I said, and she was, by the way, very supportive in me quitting my job. She said, look, I, I notice you're not happy, you're not fulfilled in this job. I can tell that you're not going to be happy long term if you stay there. So I want you to, even if we're poor, I would rather you to be happy in your work and us be poor. So she was amazing in supporting me. And I said, okay, let's do it. So I quit my job and that first year of marriage, she hardly saw me because I'd have to work from 8 a.m. to midnight, you know, 12, 14 hour days sometimes because I was working full time doing video freelance, trying to start up that business. And I was also building this full time filmmaker course and so I told my wife during that time, I said, look, if you will give me just two, three years to work my butt off right now and to work like no one else is willing to work right now, then I promise we'll be able to live like no one will be able to live later. 
And so that was kind of the goal going into those first, year, first year, years of marriage is I wanted to have kids and I knew once the kids came, we weren't going to be able to take as many financial risks. I wasn't going to be able to work as many long hours. And so those were the years for me to risk and to, to go all out and to build my own business. So I started my own business, started doing freelance video, um, started having immediate success with it. Probably took two or three months after quitting Devon for me to start making enough money to live off of. Uh, but pretty soon I was, I was getting rolling and I was making good money, feeling good about things. Here's just a look at a few of the industries that I started dabbling in. With Devon Super Tramp, it was mostly action sports and events that we were shooting. And I just got kind of, you know, bored of the same video. I mean, they weren't boring, but after a while of doing the same thing over and over again, I just kind of felt like I want to learn new things. I want to grow. I want to expand my skill sets. So when I quit working for him, I started doing music videos and weddings and real estate and corporate business and travel tourism and documentaries, independent films. So I started expanding um, my skill set, which made my life and my job so much more fulfilling and satisfying because I was growing. I was, I was getting better at my, at my, at my skill sets. And uh, for, for anyone wondering uh, my tips for making money in video, like I mentioned, investing yourself is the first tip I'll give. Mastering your skills. I always talk about how your work should speak for itself. If you want people to hire you, then you need to create work that they're going to want to hire you for. And so that's what full-time filmmaker is all about, is teaching you the skills you need to make your work stand out above the crowd. Um, but then using that work as a demo piece or a portfolio that other people notice and then want to hire you off of. So, for example, if you want to get into wedding films, what's the first step? Find somebody who doesn't have a budget and go offer to do a free wedding video for them. Whether that's a friend, family, go find someone on Instagram, I don't know. Find somebody who doesn't have a budget, offer a free wedding video. They're getting a video they wouldn't have had anyways. You're a rookie, you've never done one. It's probably gonna turn out kind of crappy, but it's better than nothing. So you make that wedding video for them. They're happy. You get a demo piece, a demo video. You take that video to the next person and say, hey, I charge $200 for a video. You're still not very good, but it's like, hey, it's low budget. So we'll give this guy a chance. It's better than nothing. You make another video, it's a little bit better this time. You take that video and you put, use that to promote yourself for the next one. And then pretty soon you've done 10 wedding videos. Each of those people have a good wedding video. They've showed their friends and family on social media. Then people are asking, hey, who did that video for you? Oh, here's his contact information. So all of a sudden you're starting to get referrals from people that you've filmed weddings in the past. And that's kind of how I got rolling, is first having a decent camera that can create good enough images, getting your skill set to a place where you can create good enough videos, and then creating those demo videos and creating content, getting out there, faking it till you make it, until pretty soon, where I'm at now, I haven't done a wedding video in two years, and I still get a wedding inquiry probably once or twice a week. People are still contacting me to do wedding videos from videos that I shot years ago, because they're up on YouTube. If you go type in Salt Lake City Temple Wedding, mine is the first video to come up, and so people are looking to hire me first. They watch it, they like it, they wanna hire me. So putting yourself out there on YouTube, Vimeo, Instagram, and then giving your videos to your clients so they can put it on online and show their friends and their family, you gotta get yourself out there. And at first you're not gonna be confident, but put it out there and that's how you slowly start growing. Um, and that's the marketing and then, and then building relationships we'll talk about in a minute here. And we talked about adding value first and working for free to eventually start charging fees. So my first year that I bought that first T3i, I probably made less than $10,000 that year, was scraping by in college, not really making much. And then when I quit Devon, that first year I quit and started my own business, I made uh, around $100,000 that year. And I went from charging anywhere from zero to $500 per video to, at that time, charging about $2,000 to $5,000 per video. So that kind of shows you the progression over three or four years of uh, where I was able to take that business just by learning from watching YouTube videos and by having Devin as a mentor for a couple years to kind of take me under his wing and learn from him. But that $100,000 right there, um, that was kind of my goal quitting Devin. As I said, I want to I make six digits. I'm sure that's the goal a lot of you guys have had. And when I was going to high school, I was always told, 
you can be a doctor, you can be a lawyer, you can be an accountant, you can be, you can be one of like seven things, and here's the salary caps you can have on each of those. And I saw one of them was a marketer, and I'm like, okay, I might want to be that. And they said, you can make $150,000 as a marketer. I'm like, okay, cool. So that was my goal growing up. My, my ceiling, my cap, what I thought I was capable of doing, ever making, was $150,000. So up until this point in my life, I was pretty satisfied with the money I was making. Felt really good about the achievements I was gaining. Until I went to a, one of my filming gigs for a company called Jeunesse. I was filming there with some buddies, and uh, I met somebody that worked for Jeunesse who was around my age at the time. He was about 26, and I was chatting with him. His name was Sebastian, and he said something that I thought was crazy. He said, my goal is to be a millionaire before I'm 30. And I looked at him like, dude, you're delusional. You're going to make, you're going to be a millionaire before you're 30. And I was at the time 26 too, and I'm thinking to myself, I'm going to make a million dollars by the time I'm 30, this, that would never happen. And so I kind of wrote him off as a crazy dude, but I started thinking about it, and I'm like, why not? Why couldn't you do that? What's keeping somebody from making more money than what they previously thought they were capable of making? And I thought back to that problem that I had when I was first you know, buying my camera, trying to figure out how to learn it. And I thought, if I had that problem of, okay, how do I use this thing? I spent months searching on YouTube for mediocre answers that were you know, 20 minute videos that gave you one minute of information. I thought, if I'm having that problem, there's gotta be tons of other people having that problem too. So I posted on Instagram, this is called market research, people. At the time, I had no idea what it was called. I was just doing stuff. <laughs> but I posted on Instagram. At the time, I had like 30,000 followers that I'd gained on Instagram from you know, being around Devin Supertramp. And I asked these people, all these filmmaker followers, I said, I think I'm going to create a course. I'm going to make some tutorials. What do you guys think? What would you want to learn from me? What would you want to know about what I know if I were to do that? And I got probably two to 300 questions from that post I did. I was like, man, that's some demand right there. There's a market for this. So I took all those answers, and I scripted 100 pages of organized answers. I categorized all their questions into categories and then answered all of them. I basically wrote a book answering questions about filmmaking. And then I took that little book, and over the next six months, I filmed and edited all those tutorials into what is now full-time filmmaker this online course that teaches people how to do video for a living. And that $100,000 that I had made, you see up here, this is, my, this is my 2018 income. This is last year's income. I'm breaking it down for you so you can see how you can make money with video and where my money comes from. YouTube brand deals slash client videos, you know, shooting real estate videos, weddings. I don't do a lot of the client-based videos anymore, but that's where that pie is. Did about $50,000 last year in that. AdSense is what YouTube pays you to run ads on your videos. Made about $17,000 last year from that. Affiliate marketing, made about $33,000 from that. That's where you promote other people's products in videos and then give affiliate links where they can go buy that. If they buy that, you get a little 4 or 3% of whatever they paid for that. Stock footage, that's selling footage you've already shot to companies who need to use it for commercials or documentaries or whatever. So that kind of shows you the breakdown of where my income comes from. That $100,000 right there is about how much all that other stuff makes and about how much I'd still be making today, maybe more as I grow and get better, had I not started full-time filmmaker, which consists of 95% of my income. So that one problem that I saw and my willingness to spend about nine months to work my butt off to create a solution that fit the needs of the people in the market that wanted to solve that problem is what allowed me to become a millionaire before I was 30 years old. And I actually called Sebastian, the crazy dude that wanted to be a millionaire, I called him last year, or I emailed him, and I said, hey, I just want to thank you for expanding my mindset, expanding my vision, because up until I met you, I never even dreamed 
of making more money and developing anything beyond just doing my thing and making my, my nice money, my, my salary, my hundred grand a year. And, and it's not just about the money. I show you the numbers just to show you what can happen when you expand your mind. I'm not doing this to glow and show you how cool I am. I'm doing it to show you that we're given a ceiling when we're very young, all through high school, even through college, you're oftentimes given a ceiling. This is what you can accomplish. This is your potential. You can be one of these seven things and you can make this much money. That's your ceiling. And I believed in that ceiling my whole life until I met Sebastian and he knocked it down. He said, screw the ceiling, go higher. And that's when my mind started thinking, okay, how could I go higher? And then I started working a lot harder to get higher. So I want to, um, we're going to do a Q&A here in just a second. I just want to give you my final summary, my five keys to success. <sighs> Number one is clarity. People always say, do what you're passionate about. It's like, yeah, but if you're not good at it, <laughs> don't, don't do that anymore. <laughs> so I say, do what you're passionate about meets what you're actually good at. Now, people don't know this, but before I got into video, I wanted to do music production. I wanted to make my own songs, I wanted to sing, but I don't have a good voice. And I recognized that early on, and so I pivoted. It's like, I'm not going to be able to succeed at music, but how about music videos? And I happen to be a lot better at making videos, which kind of took off for me. And so, yes, find what you're passionate about but be willing to pivot. If you're not that good at it, well, find something like it that you might be good at or something within it that you might be good at. Like filmmaking, there's a lot within filmmaking you could be good at. Maybe you're not that good at actually shooting the video, but maybe you're a really good editor. Or maybe you're not a good editor, but maybe you have a really good eye for color correction or really good ear for sound design. There's so many things within filmmaking that you could do that you could be successful at, maybe have a good skill for, that isn't necessarily what you originally thought, where you want to be the one with the camera shooting the video. And so be willing to pivot, get clarity for what you love meets what you're actually good at. That took me a few years, but once I found it, it changed my whole life. And it's going to take time getting that clarity. And it's going to take, it's going to take more than just sitting in a classroom. Now, I didn't finish college. I dropped out of SUU and chose to go film around the world with Devin Supertramp, which ended up being a good decision for me. It's not always a good decision for everyone to drop out of college. But I always recommend people, when they say, should you go to college, I say, yeah, go to college. Go get an education. But don't just go sit in a classroom, do the bare minimum, get by, get your grades, and then graduate and expect to have a life and have a successful job or, or business. While you're going to school, be proactive and be extracurricular and get out and do internships to find out what you love. Get some clarity. Now, hopefully, you can get some clarity when you're sitting in a classroom. I never got it. I sat in classrooms for 15, 18 years and never got clarity. It wasn't until I went extracurricular and started looking on YouTube and started experimenting with cameras that I got some clarity. So do whatever you have to do. Be proactive about finding what you're passionate about and what you're good at. That may happen in school, but it may not happen in school. But take the time and the energy to do that. Don't just go through the motions if you're going to school. Number two is confidence. We talked about this. Fake it till you make it. Be confident in yourself. Act on opportunities, and that will increase your confidence, which will give you the confidence to act on bigger opportunities. Number three is circle of influence. This is a huge one. Being able to attach myself to Devin Supertramp, it made my clout go way up. All of a sudden, everyone thought I was really cool and a lot better than I really was. It was really hard to get that opportunity. I had to work really hard and for free for a long time to get there. But I love the phrase that you are the, you are the average of the five people you hang around most. So if you hang around five idiots, you'll become the sixth. If you hang around five alcoholics, you will become the sixth. If you hang around five millionaires, you will become the sixth. 
And that's what I started doing. I started hanging around millionaires. I started hanging around with a different group of people, with Devin Supertramp, with other mentors that would later teach me other skills that were way above where I was at. And as I attached myself to them, added value to what they were doing, that value came right back to me, and I eventually became just like they were in their levels of success. So surround yourself with people that are more successful than you, and you will become like them, assuming you're willing to work as hard and do the same things they were willing to do to get there. Number four is continue learning and growing. We talked about this, but um, a lot of people will start a business, will have some success, and then they coast. There's no such thing as being a neutral in life. If you're not progressing, you're digressing. Don't ever coast. Always be learning and growing, furthering your business, improving your product, having better customer service. Because if you're not doing that, you're going down. And I've seen it happen so many times. And that's what I attribute a lot of my success to is I'm never content with just, okay, I built that, I built this, I accomplished this. It's like, no, I accomplished that, which allows me to do this. And hopefully you just keep rising and growing and, and, and progressing, not just financially, but in every area of life. Number five is create that new ceiling. Talked about it. Expand your mindset. Again, I'm not showing you my finances so you can be impressed with how much money I can make. I show it to you to expand your mindset and let you know that I was exactly where you guys were five or six years ago, being told where my cap was, just like you may be being told in certain aspects by certain people. And I'm here to tell you that any of you guys are capable of making as much money as doing as many things in life as you want to do with becoming as successful as you want in life. First you have to believe it, then you have to act on it, have confidence, and grow. So those are my five keys to success. That's me. What questions do you guys have? Yeah, what's up? How did I support myself while I was working for free? Um, I had a scholarship at SUU, and so I didn't have to pay for that. I, uh, I honestly was scraping by. When I launched Full-Time Filmmaker, I had $500 in my bank account. I basically worked for free building Full-Time Filmmaker for nine months. You know, people see the numbers of, you know, how much money you're making now, and it's like, well, yeah, you didn't see the first year where I didn't make any money and was barely making by and uh, sacrificing all that time, not being able to be with my wife. Um, so as far as early on, it was uh, honestly the first six months of buying that first camera, I almost quit probably three or four times. I almost sold the camera because I didn't have money to eat. And uh, it was, I had made up my mind like the month that I was gonna sell it and be like, I gotta get a real job. That was the month Devin hired me on full time. So call it luck, call it perseverance, I don't know. But uh, yeah, it, was, uh, it wasn't easy and there's gonna be a lot of sacrifice that goes in, especially in those startup months and years to be able to, to, uh, to start your own business. It's cold up here. What are you currently learning? I'm, uh, so I'm currently building a new course I built full-time filmmaker um, to a point where I feel like it's pretty complete. It's never fully complete, but I feel really good where it's at. And with my brother Dakota, we're working on right now a new course called Course Creator Pro, which teaches how I built full-time filmmaker. It's a course teaching you how to build courses. And I realized that people ask me, how did you learn all this business stuff? How did you learn how to market and advertise? And I tell people, I. I didn't really learn it, I just, I started doing it and eventually got good at it, but it's just kind of come naturally to me, a lot of it. And so right now I'm having to study and research a lot about marketing and advertising to figure out what's inside my brain. So I read an article about marketing, I'm like, oh yeah, that's what I'm doing. 
And so I'm constantly learning how I've been successful and trying to put it into words so that I can teach other people. And I'm, I'm also trying to learn how to be a better teacher, how to, I mean, my, I've been asked a lot, you know, what is, what do you want to, where do you want to be in five to 10 years from now? I tell people I want to be a, a business mentor. I want to help other businesses grow. That's where my passion is, is seeing things grow and being a part of that. And, uh, so I want to, as far as what I'm learning, is I'm trying to learn how to help. I feel like I've been pretty successful at helping myself be successful. Now I'm trying to figure out how to help other, be, other people be successful, how to apply in everybody else the methods that have worked for me. And uh, I did that with full-time filmmaker pretty well. A lot of people have taken that course. I've been able to apply that course and be successful. But now I want to do it kind of business as a whole, marketing, advertising, teaching anybody of any business how you could you know, further your business and succeed and build a business uh, using some of the methodology that I, I've learned. So I'm constantly learning every single day. My favorite place I've been, um, sentiment-wise, is the Holy Land, Israel, Jordan, uh, for religious reasons. I just loved walking the places Christ walked and getting to see the cultures of, of uh, you know, the the Islamic people and the Jewish people and, and the Christians that are back there. And uh, so that was probably my favorite trip as a whole. As far as destination-wise, like doing cool stuff, New Zealand's definitely the top there. A lot of really cool stuff. Beauty-wise, probably Iceland. Would you consider yourself an artist? No. <laughs> Would I consider myself an artist was the question. Um, I, I feel like I have some artistic ability. I'm Japanese, I'm a quarter Japanese, and so I'm, I'm, a, I'm an efficiency monster. I love, I love being, I love working first of all, and I love being very efficient. I have kind of an analytical brain, but I do also have a creative side. Um, I would say my brothers are more creative than I am, they're more artists than I am. Someone like Devin Supertramp, I'd say is a pure artist. I just feel like, yeah, I like doing creative stuff, but I don't feel nearly as creative as artists. <laughs> so I have enough to be able to create art, but I wouldn't call myself an artist. Yeah, so how do you stand out um, in a saturated market of video and photography? Like I mentioned, this kind of goes along with my six steps to making money. Um, number one would be invest in yourself. Not everybody's willing to buy a nice enough piece of gear to get something that looks more professional than someone's iPhone. Um, iPhones are coming a long way, by the way, and you can get quite professional things with very cheap pieces of gear, so it's not like you have to spend you know, tens of thousands of dollars, but be willing to invest in something that's professional uh, to a certain level, and you're already gonna cut out 90% of the people. Um, and then be, be willing to master your skills, which means a lot of repetitions, a lot of practice, and a lot of, you know, um, trying to educate yourself. I mean, full-time filmmaker is an example of one educational resource, but there's so many online courses out there. There's so many courses, I'm sure, here in your school. Um, but your work should speak for yourself, and that's what I've found has led me to success with video, is I've never marketed myself, never had to run ads for video. People come to me, simply by me putting out my work, because they say, man, that was so good, and so much better than a lot of other videos I've seen, that I will pay whatever your cost is to be able to hire you. And so it really is just differentiating yourself from other people's work and um, improving your skills every day. And it's gonna take time. I mean, it took me years to get to a point. I mean, within the first few months, people were hiring me, but it took me a few years before um, I felt like I was above most of the crowd and, and people were wanting to hire me over anyone else. So it takes a lot of repetitions, a lot of hard work, um, and again, a lot of confidence. You just have to act, continue acting, repping, um, practicing. Which brand? <laughs> Me? Yeah. <laughs> well, like, like I said, you have to, you know, your logo and right. 
Um, be more specific, the, which part of the brand? Like, like the actual logo itself or just branding in general? Um, the logo <laughs> is, I was just doing a f for fun photo shoot up on a mountain and I like doing yoga. And so I got in a yoga position, named that position. And then I held my camera up like this, just kind of messing around. And I had someone stamp a picture of me and I was like, yeah, that's kind of cool. And I didn't think much of it. And then like a couple years later when I started full-time filmmaker, I'm like, let's make that my logo. And so I did. That was, <laughs> that was my branding decision there. I honestly don't think, um, I don't think a lot about branding. Again, that's one thing that kind of comes naturally to me where I just do things and it happens to work out. But my, my personal brand is Parker Walbeck. My YouTube channel is called Parker Walbeck. And for anybody who's thinking about video or photography, I'd recommend just using your name. A lot of people think, should you do, you know, Flamingo Films or something creative? It's like, just, just use your name. I mean, there's pros and cons to using something abstract and just using your name. But when you're trying to get started, especially starting out, it's going to be a lot easier to brand yourself as an individual. Think about any photographer you've hired. They're usually not an abstract business name. They are themselves, right? And so I would recommend, specifically in this field, as an artist, as a creative, you are the business. It's your specific art, your specific talent. That's the pros and cons of this industry, is it kind of all rides and depends on you and your ability to do your one skill. But that having been said, you might as well brand it as yourself, right? Become the brand. And that goes for becoming a YouTuber. All the most successful YouTubers, they're mostly just their name. Casey Neistat, Peter McKinnon. Their name is their brand. People know them, their personality, their art, their style. That's their brand. Do you have any daily habits that you like daily habits. Someone just asked me this just earlier. Um, my routine goes something like this. I wake up at 2 in the morning with the baby and then fall asleep at 4 and then wake up at 9 or 10. I'm not the kind of entrepreneur that's going to tell you to get up at 6 a.m. and work out till 8 a.m. and then go do yoga for an hour. In the real world, where you have families and kids, your schedules get a little more chaotic, chaotic than that. I'm not a morning guy. Um, but as far as habits, um, I mentioned this earlier, time management is probably the biggest habit slash skill that I think a lot of especially young people lack that's keeping them from succeeding in life and in business. I feel like what I can do in a day takes most people a week to do and that's because I know how to manage my time. I eliminate distractions. How many of you guys have Instagram notifications turned on right now? It's not bad. Still too many. How many have your uh, Gmail your email uh, notifications turned on. Those are distractions. Now, if there's very specific, important emails you're waiting for or needing, then I understand. Or if your business rides on uh, needing to answer those emails immediately, that's one thing. But in general, turn off all of your notifications on your phone. It usually takes me personally about 20 to 30 minutes to get in the zone where I'm my most productive self. And then once I get into that zone, I'm like three or four times more productive than I was before I was in that zone. And if someone emails me or calls me and I take it and respond or take it and get on the phone, I'm out of the zone. And then it takes another 20 or 30 minutes to get back in that productive zone. And if you're taking an email or a call or checking your Instagram every 10 minutes, you're never in the zone. You're never productive, never fully productive, ne never nearly as productive as you could have been had you turned off your notifications, turned off all your distractions. My wife knows this. I work from my basement, and I tell her, if it's an emergency, come downstairs and get me. Otherwise, I may not answer your phone calls or your texts until like 5 or 6 at night. So I hone in on my highest value activities, whatever I plan on getting done that day, and I say nothing else is going to distract me until I get that one thing done. And that's something that a lot of people have a hard time doing, especially today with so many apps and social medias and distractions around us constantly. 
It's hard to just focus on one task and not procrastinate or get caught up doing something less important than that. So if there's one habit or skill that I would say you should practice learning right now, it's to manage your time well. It's to make sure every day counts. Anyone who's served an LDS mission, that's where I first learned it. You go from 6 a.m. to 10 at night. Every second is filled with a visit, with some kind of activity. Every hour, every minute is supposed to be filled with something productive. And when I came off that mission, nothing's changed. I want every day to be as, as productive as possible, no time waste. So I would, I would attribute a lot of my success to just the fact that I'm working hard, but I'm working really smart and very efficiently. If there's anything, if there's one thing I could change if I could go back, it would be uh, managing relationships better. Um, I'm sure you've heard it. It's all about who you know, not what you know, and that's absolutely true. Um, me getting to know Devin Supertramp was a huge part of my success. The way I left Devin Supertramp and the relationship that I slightly burnt there by leaving, I didn't handle very well. And so, um, if there's one thing I could change going back, it would be putting people first before anything, realizing the importance of, of people and making sure you keep all those relationships strong, um, no matter what comes up. We have time for one more question. One of us. How did I put myself out there in the beginning? Um, you guys saw the first, one of the first videos that I put out there that got some traction was that, that paint dance fight, right? Or that paint dance party. Um, utilize social media. It's free marketing. It's free advertising. Create a YouTube channel. Create an Instagram account. Create a Facebook page. Create a Vimeo page. Put all of it on all the social medias. Get as many eyeballs as you can. It's not going to be a lot starting out. But I have half a million subscribers right now and I have no idea where they came from. It happened over like seven years of consistent content for years and years and years. I probably made some 500 videos in the past six or seven years, you know. So it's just like, I've just done a lot of work. So putting yourself out there, just start, just put it out there. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. Thank you, Parker, for taking the time to come out here to Logan, braving the elements. Thanks for having me, guys. Yep.